Have you ever come to that place in life yet? Where you began questioning everything? Well, if you haven't, I'm sure you will. <laughs> I mean, I believe I've come to that place in my life. I just want to be home. My parents are getting old now, and my aunt has old timers. And she is losing her mind. When I think about it, their whole generation is about to leave us. And I feel like, with the way the world is turning, yeah, I just want to be holy. At first, I wanted to be loved. Yeah, I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be loved by God and man. But now at this point in my life, I just want to be holy. When I use the internet, I don't feel very holy. The things I see, the things I see people saying, the things I say, all of it, really just makes me feel unholy. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this. The fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major lift. The baffled king composing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
was a time that you let me know what's really going on below and now you never show that to me do you but remember when I moved in you the holy dove was moving to It's not a cry you hear at night. It's not someone who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 There's days when I'm sick. Or like there's something wrong with my neck. But it really doesn't matter. And I think of my son and his girlfriend and their future, especially one without me in it. Well, that just makes me sick. But still, I trust God. When I think about death, and how final it is or seems to be, it makes my mind fill up with anxiety. And all those things have given me a desire to be holy. <laughs> to be holy. And I don't even know how to be holy because I've never been holy. I don't know what it feels like to be holy. At least not yet. And I want to live without fear. Can you tell me about some of the things you have done in your life that have made you feel holy? What is holiness? What does it even mean to be holy? After all, has been said and done, what is holiness? Is it even possible for a person to become holy? I'm sure it's not something I can declare of myself. Hey, if I became holy, would you even notice I was holy? If I was, and you did notice, how would you even react? Well, I guess right now, if I were a servant, I'd like to be a servant of my parents and my son, being there for them when they have need or have called me out for something. I wonder if there's some kind of a support team to help me out with this. And how would I know if the support I was getting was becoming a hindrance to me? My walk with God. <laughs> yeah. What does it even take for a person to become holy? Yeah. 
If someone could give me a guide, then surely someone has become holy and knows the way. Why do I even feel the need to be holy? Am I not okay now? I mean, who? What has declared me to be unholy? How come holiness has to be achieved? Why must it be gained? I guess it is not a right to have, right? Hmm. Feels like holiness is a privilege for those who can. Is faith above holy? Or more desirable than to be holy? Faith is something yet to come. Hope is believing that what's to come will be worthy of rejoicing or a climax of sorts, an achievement, maybe a privilege gained. I don't know. Faith is not having something, but hoping to get that something and receiving it with joy and happiness, a completion of sorts, right? One day I hope to be holy. Am I holy today? I'm not sure. I don't even think so. I don't think it's something I de can declare for myself because it's not a right. Like breathing is a right. And it only takes me taking a breath to declare that right to be true. But holiness? Yeah. Holiness is not a right. Because someone else must declare, you are holy. <laughs> like when Jesus promised the Holy Spirit. He declared that whoever receives it can claim it as their own. But it has to be given away. Like when Jesus broke the bread, fed 7,000, yet had seven baskets full leftovers after they had all eaten and were full. A gift from the Lord, meat and bread. Who ate of the bread? The people who were being healed. Were they holy? I don't know, but I do know they were all praising God. Jesus? Is Jesus holy or is it the story holy? What drove us to believe Jesus is holy? Was it because he fed 5,000 and healed all the sick? Or was it because he rose from the dead? And what is the seed of Christ? Is it faith or holiness? Is the word of God holy? If it is, and it is alive within my mind, and it drives me to be holy. Is that the guide? A spirit unknown to me, drawing me through the waters into a place I have not been before. Holy! When? When will I be holy? It's not like Jesus needed my help to feed the 5,000 with two fish and five loaves. How could I have found this gift or guide had I not heard of it or seen it? If Jesus is holy and I want to be holy, then I must become like him, right? I mean, maybe. This is why believers 
have been saying for 2,000 years, Jesus is coming, the glory of our hope. Waiting patiently to rejoice in our completion. Because it'll be at that point. I will not have to strive to be something I am not today, which is holy. Maybe Jesus has thought of us being holy because he is an eternal being. And death had no power over him. The spirit comes from the blood because it is in the blood that we find the life of a man. If we drink from a blood source or life force which has within it eternal life, then surely we will be declared to be holy. Where can I find the source of life? Is it found? In the rivers that flow with an everlasting trickle? Since the creation of the world, rivers have been flowing nonstop, producing fish as if they just appeared out of nowhere. Those same rivers have fed tens of billions of human beings for over hundreds of thousands of years. And they're still flowing strong teeming with life today. Does my existence make me holy? I don't know. It's not something I can declare for myself. That's why I look for the comforting word of the Holy Spirit, who I am sure will put a seal on me once I have been declared holy. May God have mercy on us all. In Jesus' name, amen. I mean, amen. The firstborn of everything in Israel has been declared as belonging to God by the power of his own word. He has claimed that the firstborn and its offspring is being concentrated, is being holy unto God. Jesus, being the firstborn of the dead, crucified, pierced to make sure there was no way to rise after the sun had set. But rose back to life, displaying himself for us all to see that his life Word and blood were 100% eternal. I mean, think about it. The people of ancient times claimed they saw the holy ones of God ascending and descending from the heavens above. People called them crazy. But today, we know that what they saw was us. Here in this world, 3,000 years ago, our world and our lives seem to be heavenly, beyond their imaginations, flying about the world in airplanes or chariots driven by fire. I mean, come on, listen to me. Drones that seem to defy gravity by the power of some sort of will unknown to the human being with eyes or what seem to be many eyes able to see all cameras in a collective mind generated by the power of light. Right? Fiber optics, guys. One mind being powered by one spirit, the will to make this a better world than it already is. Look at the buildings and how at nighttime they are filled with light not made by fire, and warmth inside the house, again, not generated by fire. 
It's unimaginable for the ancient people of our past. They called it God's living space. Heaven. They said the holy ones of God live in places such as these. Driving cars or horses driven by fire. No need for the sun or the moon. Because they had the ability to be in God's presence. And he was the light. And there was no darkness because God was everywhere. Life without an ending, rejoicing without crying, a place where death had no place to rest, where rust and decay couldn't even enter. While all the people with one collective voice and thought laughed and enjoyed as they sat with both God and the Lamb, without being afraid of being consumed by destruction. The first of the dead. Christ's seed will follow after him because God has declared there is life after death. Life after death. Life after death. The firstborn of the dead is alive, and we shall see him face to face once we have arrived. We belong to him. He belongs to us, and everything that belongs to Jesus is of God and has eternal life. Right now, we live with God through the Spirit. God has always been past, present, and future, in the beginning and in the ending, at the highest point of any realms known, and at the deepest depths provided. He knows when we are sleeping. He knows when we are awake. He knows if we are sitting, and he knows if we are standing. He knows, he knows, he knows our names, one and all. He knows. He knows our every breath. He knows our last breath, too. He knows how many hairs are upon our head. He knows. I heard there was a sea.